off that corner number two right now. That skip pin is really has to operate. You think Dean will try to uh, keep it tight? Well, Dean says he wants to run a, a tight course. He let Chip on the inside of the plate. That's what cost him the race there. And it doesn't look like he's going to let up here. Look at the walking response to the sponsor as he comes down. It's the mud riser. It'll be about, about three seconds each of the mud riser. And we'll put the clock on. 121.6 mile an hour for the Budweiser with Dean Shenneman.
come back to live action out on the race course here under sunny blue skies. Some of the most beautiful figures you will ever see cutting the waters here on Lake Washington, and they are the old piston powered, the great traditional boats. And I'm going to let Chip Hanauer and Pat O'Day and Mike talk about these boats. Chip, you you were in one of those boats. Well, there's one boat, the blue boat, the Atlas Van Lines. That was the boat that was built after Bill Muncy was tragically killed in 1981 in Acapulco, Mexico. I was hired to drive the boat for the Muncy family, and we went on. That's not the boat there. That's an actually an older, what they call a round nose boat. There's the Atlas Van Lines boat that was built after Bill Muncy's death, and we went on to win my first national championship and my first gold cup, and it's sitting next to to its right, a Budweiser boat that was driven by Dean Chenoweth, and unfortunately, Dean Chenoweth was killed in this boat. But what's significant about this other Budweiser boat is it was powered by Rolls Royce Griffin. And what we were so proud of in the Atlas boat, this is the, the Bud, Budweiser right there. Oh, I'm sorry, that's me yesterday yes, driving is. the boat uh, here with my head sticking up there with the Budweiser. And I can't tell you what a thrill it was to not just drive the boat, but to look over there and see that Griffin Budweiser, who was driven by two of the drivers that I think were the best I ever drove against, which was Dean Chenoweth and Jim Cropfield. And the only thing that would have made that day, yesterday, even more special, if I could have looked across and seen Jim Cropfield driving that boat because I raced him so hard. So, that was a real magic day for me yesterday. Mike Fitzsimmons, Pat O'Day at the start-finish line. You remember those great races. You remember these great boats. This is always a treat to see these old boats out here on the water. Oh, it absolutely is. And you're looking at Hawaii Hawaii Kai right now, which is actually a replica. Chip Hanauer also drove this boat when it was the Hewling Brothers back in 1976 when he was a completely ignorable rookie. Oh, I'm still and, ignorable, uh, completely. And, and, and everybody overlooked him to their own peril because even though he had no power to get to the start-finish line, he got there just like the rookies are doing today and uh, taught some lessons to some of the veterans in those days, Pat. You know, I want to tell you something about that blue boat and the Budweiser out there. Uh, Dean Chenoweth, the, the late Dean and had things all his way and uh, he had a shock because it was in Detroit that Chip really uh, really let that boat go, that blue boat and uh, Chip won the gold cup in Detroit in that boat and beat Dean Chenoweth and shocked the Budweiser That's camp. exactly what happened and with that Merlin uh, which was underpowered comparatively and also Chip uh, drove the boat literally at the bitter edge the whole way and scared the devil out of most of us watching. Well everyone thought it was Annie Annie over for the Merlin versus the Griffin. Well, Sarah put that all together and Chip drove it so beautifully and uh, just shocked the Budweiser camp in Detroit when they captured the gold cup. Yeah, it was just the most magical day in my racing life um, to have won the gold cup in Detroit, driving for the Muncie family like nine months after the death of Bill Muncie. Uh, it was just magic and I could have ended my career right there and, and gone, to, gone to my grave a happy man. As we look at those old round nose boats we remember that's the way the sport began uh, they, all the boats looked just like that they had the circular bow uh, they were more narrow had the high tail in the rear they bounced they jerked they didn't have the big skid fins so they couldn't throw the water and hook through a corner uh, they would have to slow down a great deal the when did the skid fin come into play Jim well they got big here just not uh, maybe four or five years ago but the vintage boats are great and I think we're ready to go to a break here we are indeed we're going to look at these boats as they continue to work their way back to the pits these spectacular boats chip hanauer actually you one of the few guys that was able to make that crossover to go from the open cockpit racing and then move into the closed cockpit and i was the first guy to wear seat belts and today of course everybody's buckled in and so uh, yeah there was a lot of firsts for me i was a guinea pig for a lot of things <laughs> well, including and, this broadcast and I you're here to it. talk about it and right. that maybe is the greatest thing of all because as you've noted all of you guys have noted perhaps the greatest drivers of all down through the years there are very few of them still with us to be able to talk about the sport and chip you are and, and we're all thankful for that thank you so we've got much more racing ahead it's always great to see the vintage boats out there it's been a treat we've got more air show and what we're going to do when we come back is take a look at some of the unlimited light racing from yesterday always close always exciting the unlimited lights we'll be back with that after this